Right, hi guys, welcome along. Spa Classic, Indy Pro 2000. Uh, car number three, we've qualified P2. It was touch and go for a minute, but Christoph pipped us by two tenths in the end. Uh, dipped into the 211, so a really good lap. But we're in a, a decent place to start, so hopefully keep it clean. Come out with this with positive eye rating and safety. Uh, rating. Right, Alan, you can always have a good run starting last. It's good fun going through the field. I think it's a 1.9 strength of field. Not sure about gains or losses at this stage, but hopefully we're in the green. So I'm really enjoying driving this. It's probably the most immersive car on iRacing. The only criticism I have is it's so good in the draft, this thing, that I would love to see some strategy come into play with a pit stop uh, if the race was a little bit longer. But fortunately not, so we've got 15 laps. No pit stop. So no fuel, no tyres. Apologies for the audio if you can hear the fans blowing. Just waiting for Christoph. Oh no, Christoph screws it up. I'm not sure who we're waiting for. So, if you like this sort of thing, if this video's made it to YouTube, that means it's probably gone quite well. If you would consider clicking the subscribe button over there, I'd really appreciate it, thank you. The air you. temp is 17 Celsius. The track temp is 18 Celsius. There's a Thrustmaster giveaway on my page somewhere if you would like to have a look at that. Follow the safety car in the right column. Tires wear out quite dramatically on this thing. Spa Classic, so the pace car's not coming in here at the bus stop chicane. It's coming in down the main strain. to for Eau Rouge. Got an itchy head right underneath me goggles. Okay, Duncan, get ready. Green, green, green. Right side. Hold your line. Hold your line. Clear right. Clear right. Sweet start, mate. Keep it coming. is now 0.7. Looks like a Braun GP car behind me. Hopefully it's more Rubens Barrichello or the Jensen but Make him go the long way around. He is car number one though, so... And he's in draft, so we'll just see how it goes.
there's absolutely no shaking them, that's the problem when they're in the draft. And this is why I would like to see the lead. Uh, a forced pit stop, whether it's for fuel or a new tyre model that would force a tyre change. I thought he's right rimming. He's got the pace on me, I think. Obviously, he's got draft, but I think he is probably a little bit quicker than me anyway. OK, Duncan, hold your nerve. Just keep it smooth. No mistakes. I'll try not to make it too easy for him. But we have got a pretty decent gap. between ourselves and P4. So hopefully they're not going to do anything stupid. The guy behind has just done a 213.0. So we're car numbers one, two and three. The top three at the moment. Try not to give him too much draft. change, not sure what's happened there. Wow, we've dropped right back. Out of draft and everything, so... Pressure's off. imagine there's been contact there which oh, I would imagine will result in the gap behind is increased to 4.9 seconds I don't think you can take much damage in these take much for your wheel to be off I'm ready for it, ready So it looks like it's uh, Christoph's fault, that one. So we'll take a look at the end of the race. I don't want to become complacent here. 4.8 second gap. We'll just try and manage it. The tyres will start to drop off. One of my main problems has been consistency on iRacing. Making silly mistakes. As I found out in the league. On uh, Wednesday night, from podium position, Franz Arch dipped the wheel on the gravel at turn one. Spat me straight into the wall at speed. Car was damaged. We do get a fast repair in that league, so I was able to come back out, but 
I was a lap or so down on the leaders and there was no way back and there was no real pressure on me from behind. And it's just one of the things I need to work on. So if you're a beginner like myself, in terms of iRacing, I've only been using iRacing for a couple of years now and I still consider myself in that beginner bracket. Certainly in this car as I'm new to it. Then you'll feel my pain making these mistakes. It takes a lot to gain I rating I've found. Not much to lose it, right? We've got pressure from Atmacher behind then. He's closed that gap by a second. I've been taking it easy, but I don't want to let him in draft. So we'll try and pick the pace up a little bit. don't make mistakes and the gap still continues to close then I know there's no point pushing. Random, I don't know what happened there. You must have slowed down there. Sorry mate. The guy behind has just done a 212. So 212 4 behind. 213.5 was my last two. He's a second quicker than me on that lap. seconds. You're leading. Of course he may be taking a little too much out of his tyre as well. Gap continues to come down pretty quickly as well. And he's got no draft remember so... Chances are he's just got pace. Sorry, Brendan, I didn't mean that. I wasn't sit behind you. I was going to try and side you up at the end of the straight. But your car just stopped in front of it. Absolutely flying. Hopefully, he's killing his tyres. That's the only chance of holding on to this P1, I think, but we'll see. Okay, Duncan, relax, focus, keep it smooth. That's your fastest lap today. Sector 1 is 0.2 off the pace. The guy behind has just done a 212.1. Wow, nine tenths quicker than me that lap. 12 ones quality pace for me. He's banging him in lap after lap.
Not sure if I'm on any incidents. I don't think I've got any got any off track. Certainly been no contact. 1.9 seconds behind. I was almost in draft. Wow. The guy behind's really new in. The gap's now 1.9. We'll see about staying with him then. Once he comes past, which he inevitably will. Wow. Oh, there's my first one then. That's my second, so two. Just had a warning for cutting the track. So what I mean about silly mistakes, keep doing it. I think that's the difference between these guys, the 3KI ratings and, and above. Just consistency, just churning out lap after lap with no mistakes. Hoping to get there one day. 2.7k is the highest I've been. that wall there. I think he may have just clipped that wall. B2, your lap time was 2.14.4. You're a second down in sector three. This has been happening. I didn't realise that Christoph's now right behind me again. Seeing that guy extend the track there on the left, going into the chicanes, never thought about doing that. The gap behind is now 1.4. Makes perfect sense, but I've never seen anyone do it in a, a GT car or anything like that, so... Let's see if we'll work out for him. Thank you. 
Hey, Duncan, there's a car exit in the pits. Heads up. The leader has just done a 211.8. Don't think about the lap times. Just hit each and every apex. That's halfway. We think about eight laps remaining on this tank. That's your quickest lap. 11, eight, but... Lucky to be able to hold that slide. Christoph's within draft then. Christoph's got the pace then to challenge Mikhail up front. The gap behind is now 0.7. That lap time was 213.4. So I've got the pace to challenge neither. Make him do all the work. Focus on your exits. Attention to track limits, please, Duncan. You spooked me a little bit there. Got an off track. I don't know if it was deliberate. I mean, it worked really well if it was. But luckily, I was able to just go straight across. No steering input. just to say appeared in my right mirror once we got into the braking zone and I know he was the guy who caused the collision earlier so I may have just uh, bottled it because of that the gap in front is now 2.0 seconds well, I think it was coming past anyway, regardless of where we did it. They both closed me down from big gaps. Hopefully Todd doesn't. 11 seconds, that'd be a bad one to lose. Still in a podium spot. Can't complain. It's hard to see P1 disappear like that, but... What am I going to do? I can only drive to the limits of my skill set. If these guys are better than me, they're better than me. Simple as that. Not always the easiest swill Apollo. Uh, <laughs> swill Apollo? <laughs> not almost, not always the easiest pill to swallow, is what I mean to say. P3.
So Mikhail's shot off. Christoph. May just come back to us. If he's uh, killed his tyres. 1.7 second, 1 .7 seconds. Away. Like I say, tyres are an issue. If he's pushed hard. Same time, I don't want to push too hard either because I'll kill mine. The gap ahead is now 1.7 seconds. And I don't want to overdrive the car either in case I make a mistake. But if I can pick up P2 back from Christoph, then it's worth it. up there going in the beauty of this is you see it you see the lockups happening so back straight off Cheers, buddy. Oh dear me, <laughs> pushing way too hard, way too hard. Feels good on the limit this thing though, very predictable. Set up from fuel driving school, if you're interested recently switched my allegiance from virtual racing school
So virtual racing skills served me well for the time I was using them. But pure just off the edge for me at the moment. And I don't see that changing to be honest. The lap breakdown is a little less in depth but I don't mind that so much. If there's anything you need to know about the lap they'll tell you in the notes. There isn't a whole 10-15 minute walkthrough of the lap like you get with the RS. But the setups just feel so much better to me. Let me know what you think in the comments if you a subscriber to either. If you've tried both like me, which one do you prefer? The first three, thing that made me left. think we're on for a podium here. Your last lap time was at two thirteen point one. Yeah, the first thing that made me think was the pace I had in the Audi touring the car. Is now Around Suzuka with a pure setup compared to a VRS setup, I was a second quicker. And I was able to beat guys of 6ki rating round there in the touring car. I haven't driven for a while. I do have pretty good pace in the touring car. Front wheel drive cars are a little bit more my forte. Or were. Spent much more time driving them in the early days on project cars. Clio Cups. Touring car leagues we did over there. But at the time I was a subscriber to Virtual Racing School, I actually thought that pure driving school was more money, potentially the same. I thought for the equivalent money you only got one set up package, but that's the uh, £5 a month one, for £9 a month, £10 a month, whatever it is. You get access to everything. The gap in front is now 1.2 seconds. There's also a gold, gold member status, which I'm, I haven't achieved yet. You just have to be a member for a certain amount of time. I think it's a month. The leader has just done 211.7. So that may open up great uh, lap analysis depth, possibly. I don't know. Last lap, looking good for a podium. See if we can take this one away from Christoph then. We'll have a go if we can. But, uh, don't want to make too many risks, but let's see what we can do. Not the best start to the lap, to be honest. Probably could have had him there straight away, but. Keep struggling as well. So this is what I'm on about with the tyres. A lot of people complain about the tyre model on iRacing. For me, it's absolutely perfect. If the tyres are dropping off like this on the last lap of a race, then it's absolutely perfect, isn't it? X then we didn't need any of them really. See if we get to wobble on into the bus stop. If not, P3 it'll have to be. <laughs> 
7x. Nice race, buddy. One more lap, mate. Might have had you. Good race. Nice one, Donker. Great drive. That's a podium. Thanks to you guys. Thank you very much. You were fast at the end. Yeah, I was alright on the tyres, I think. P1's shot off. But yeah, nice one, buddy. P3, then. Seven incidents. Hopefully, it's still uh, still positive on the old safety rating, but we'll see. Have a little look, knock these fans off. So the reason I'm spending a bit more time doing these, doing different things rather than the VRS GT Sprint, which I'm normally doing in the Z4 currently, is I really don't like the Indy Road circuit. It's just one of them circuits. My pace isn't that bad round there. I just don't enjoy it. It's a dull circuit on the infield. I quite like the oval uh, when I've seen um, people running oval races around that. Um, then it looks quite quite good, like a fun track to, to race. But the infield, it's just dull. There's nothing. It just uh, seems like a very knocked up sort of last minute track to me. Um, I know it's not, but just how it comes across. Whereas Daytona Road, um, once you're on the infield, you've still got like content around the track. There's still stuff going on. Now, I don't expect iRacing to put it there if it's not there. Um, but surely there's a couple of a couple of grandstands, a couple of seating areas within uh, the road section of uh, the track. But, I mean, I don't know. Maybe there isn't. Right, 31 gained then, or 51 gained on the I rating, ticks us over the 2.6k mark and little old one on the safety rating, so it's a positive for both. Wow, so C class license, 2.74 and a 1900 I rating for Mikhail Athmaker, who was absolutely flying. 2.11.6, fastest lap time. So either, and I've just learned about these, it's a Smurf account. Now, if you're not sure what that is, um, it's um, somebody's second account, basically. So, the likes of uh, Benneke and them will have secondary accounts, usually under the same name. I don't expect that to be one of the, the top guys. But, um, judging from his license, his I rating and his pace, I would imagine that's a second, uh, secondary account for somebody. For the rest of us mere mortals, we were in the 212s. 212.4 for Christoph, 212.6 for me. And then the averages, 213 dead for Mikhail, 213.5 for Christoph, 213.6 for me. So it was very close between me and Christoph there, especially at the end. 107 championship points, which I don't really look at because I have not uh, taken part in any championships from the start. I've not considered them, so I, I won't be anywhere near. The top 20 or whatever gets shown on screen. So, we'll have a look. But that's a positive, another positive race in the Indy 2000s. Let's see where we are next week. Right, so we are at an oval circuit, which I don't have. We're then at mid-Ohio, which I don't like. I mean, this is I think I did this actually. I think I went through these in my last video. Um, so we'll have a look at that oval. We might buy that one. Um, and it may just fall into place with something else. What will we be doing in the oval? Was it the truck? I racing series fix. Was it this? That's not the trucks. So that's a mystery. So I don't have any of these. So I was looking at how much it's going to cost me. To start taking part in oval racing, that's the one. So I do really enjoy oval racing from what I've done, the street stock stuff. Um, but I don't own any of the content, really. Um, 
so it's gonna it's gonna cost me hundreds of pounds to take take part in the series. I was interested in the NASCAR one, but it it doesn't seem to have a week. Thirteen it doesn't seem to have that. It just seems to go and go and go. Um, which one's that? Let's have a look. Is it this one? I racing tour. No, it's not that. See, there's so many of them. They're all. Well, called the same thing as well, so I struggle knowing what's what. Which one I've just been on. So it was the cars. It was the it was the regular cars. It's not the modified series. I racing series. It may have been that. Let's have a look at the schedule. It just it was just constant. There was just no gaps. Yeah, this is it. So thirty five weeks. Solid. So I don't know if they have a gap at week thirteen. Do they have a break there? But to look at all these so i don't have that so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven I've got charlotte 12 13 14 15 16 I've got that 17 18 19 i don't know if we're repeating there i don't know if they start to repeat Maybe they do. But I'm counting 19 there before I've I seen the same one again. It may be wrong. Um, but that's 19 times £15, effectively. Or £11, $15, whatever it is. So if it's £10 a, a track, um, you know, it's £190 plus the car. Um, unless I've got the car, I don't know. I don't think I had purchase required if I hadn't. Yeah, I don't have any of the cars. So you're looking at £200 plus easy, possibly closer to 250 I would have thought, to take part in that. Um, which, from what I've seen, is probably well worth it in terms of enjoyment, because it does look great, but I'm not prepared to uh, outlay that amount uh, initially um, when I'm enjoying road, obviously. That's why I'm here, to do road racing. Isn't it? Oval was never something I was interested in. Neither was dirt, neither was dirt oval. Uh, but I enjoy them all. I've not actually done Dirt Oval, to be fair. But um, the little motocross stuff on Dirt Road is great fun. Um, and yeah, the oval racing, likewise. Um, so we'll, we will, as soon as we get to the point where we've got the content, and I'm at the point where now we're getting discount. I think it's the 40 piece club or something, the call away. As soon as you own 40 items from iRacing content wise. The knock, I think it's a 20% discount. Let's have a look. Add to cart. Because I'm close to doing it. So we'll have a look. Close to hitting it. There you go. So 20% off the 40 piece club. So anything I purchase after this, I don't want it. Anything I purchase now, I get 40%. Um, Sorry, I get 20% because I own over 40 things. So that's good. Right, I've been rambling on a little bit too long at the end of this one. So if you are still watching and you like this sort of thing and you're interested in these videos and the content I'm putting out, then stay tuned. There's going to be, hopefully very soon, there's going to be a new rig build. Um, I've got a P1X lined up and I'm also moving from VR to triples. So there's going to be quite a substantial build on the go. Possibly a new rim and a new studio design um, coming soon too. So yeah, stay posted. But um, if you would like to keep updated with what's going on, click the subscription um, button. I would really appreciate it. Stuff's going to be popping up for you to uh, click on anyway. So yeah, if you do, thank you. Really appreciate it. And we'll see you on the next one.